Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back in to OTRAM's YouTube channel. Uh, today we're continuing on with our regular maintenance series. Going to do an oil change on a 200 series with a 5.7. Uh, first thing I like to do, especially on the newer vehicles that take the 020, is to check the oil level before I get in there. This will give us a good idea of if we're burning oil or not. I haven't seen the oil burning as much of a problem with the 5.7s, but it's always good to check. So we'll pull our dipstick out and see if it'll focus on this. Eh, kind of. This one's good. Uh, and then also while I'm up top, I like to make sure I can get the fill cap open before I drain the oil out. I've had some of these be so stuck, I was worried about breaking them, taking them off. Uh, with that said, we can move underneath and start draining. So now that we're up in the air, first thing I'm gonna do is take this half of the skid plate down. So we're gonna take these two 10 millimeters out. And then I usually take this one out as well, just cause it gives you a little more flappiness there. And then we got a bunch of 12s. And then we can take that skid plate down. And that gives us access to the oil filter right up here. And then a little further back, actually let me bring you under here, see if we can get that. A little further back here, there's a smaller plastic panel that you can take off. Another set of 12 millimeter headed bolts. And this just gives you access to the drain plug. And then the drain plug is right here. So it clears this whole uh, underbelly thing but it still can drip back and run into here. So I like to take one of these form of funnels and fish it up in here and kind of make a little funnel so that if anything does run this way, it gets on my funnel and doesn't fill up the belly pan. And then it's just a 14 millimeter headed bolt to remove the drain plug. There we go, and the gasket did not come off with my drain plug, so we're gonna have to peel it off the pan once that gets done draining. Just take a little pick here and there we go. Knock the drain plug off, or drain plug gasket off. I don't know if you guys can see it, but now that it's almost done draining, it's running back on the pan and it's hitting my funnel and running down. If you don't have the funnel up here, that's when you get a whole bunch of mess up in here and because of all these ridges it's real hard to wash out okay and i've moved you around so hopefully you can see the drain plug a little bit better um it's still kind of hard to see but it's up there now that we're down to just a trickle we've got our new drain plug gasket always use a new drain plug gasket stick that in there finger tight and then it gets torqued to 30 foot pounds There we go. I'm gonna wipe up here. Wipe that guy. Then we can pull the funnel guy out and then move you back around to the front and we'll do the filter. Okay, so the oil filter is in this housing up here. And the first step, we're gonna take this drain cap off and it's just a 3 8 socket recess. And that spins off. You can see a little bit of oil come out. The factory oil filter comes with this plastic widget that you shove up in there and use that to drain the oil. I've got an adapter from Snap-on that actually has a hose that helps me not make as much of a mess. And that threads up in there. And we'll let the oil drain out. Okay, now that that's done draining, 
pop our adapter off of there. And then there are a few different styles of filter wrenches. There's this steel one that goes on um, and grabs the flutes. It's okay, but it likes, on some of them, it'll hit the engine block. So don't use that one that often. Then there's these cast aluminum style ones that grab the flutes and the lugs. I don't like these because when they slip on the flutes, they smack against the lugs and they'll actually break the lugs off of the plastic housing. And for a long time I was using this forged steel one that just grabs the flutes. Uh, really like this one. But I recently found this one on Amazon from ClickWrench. And it's cool. It fits the flutes really nicely. Uh, it's regular in reverse for removal, but it's got a torque limiter inside, so when you go to reinstall it, it automatically sets the torque. So this one's my new favorite. And you just stick an extension in it. It fits on the flutes. And you can just take the whole cartridge out. Uh, don't be surprised if you've got to use a really long wrench to get your filter off. A lot of places do not torque them and put them on way too tight, which makes them an absolute nightmare to get off. Um, and gives you the chance of breaking these ears or breaking the flutes when you're trying to remove it. So here's how it comes out. You've got plastic housing, you've got your filter, you got an O-ring here, an O-ring here. I'm gonna let this drain, clean it up, I'll bring you back. And actually, before I let that drain, I should have just pulled the filter out. So it just slides off like so, leaving this core. And if you look down inside, there's ears that hold this metal piece in. If this is unhooked, get a new housing because that's the bypass valve down in there. So you don't want anything funky going on with this. Now we're gonna let it drain. Okay, so we've got our housing all cleaned up. So we can take a pick and just take the one O-ring out on the big one. And then there's another O-ring here in the bottom for that kind of drain cover. And then we've got a pack of new O-rings from Toyota. And we're just gonna wind the new O-ring down it goes in this groove here, not all the way down. So it goes in the groove, not down against the flange. And I'm gonna reach up in here, get a little oil, and lubricate this O-ring to make it easier to go back in. And then we've got our new filter. And it just slides, seats on there like that. And we'll get up here, start that by hand. And then this goes to 25 Newton meters, which is like 18.4 foot pounds. Which, so normally you do this with a torque wrench, but you can see on my clicker wrench, it breaks away, which is pretty awesome. Uh, saves me the step of having to get the torque wrench out for that isn't a huge time saver because I've got to torque this lower cap on anyway. We put our little O-ring up in here. Sometimes it's a bear to get that to stay up in there. I'm gonna take our cap and thread that on. And then this goes to 12 and a half foot pounds, plus or minus two. So I just do it to 13. 
which is hardly anything. Okay, so we're all done with the draining, filter. Now we can go up top and put oil in. Okay, so now we can put oil back in. So we're gonna take the fill cap off. And you don't need this, but I've got the fancy thread in Toyota funnel. It makes this easier. Um, you can find them on Amazon cheap. And we're gonna put eight liters or eight and a half quarts of 020 in here. So I've got four liters in my jug because it's easier just to do half and half. And another four liters. And then while I've still got my funnel in there, I like to check my oil level just to make sure I'm in the ballpark. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but we're just a hair over, which is where we wanna be, because once we start it, it's gonna put some oil in the filter that's gonna stay in there. So then we can take our funnel off, put our oil cap back on, and we're pretty much done. I'm going to start this, let it run for a few minutes, and then I'll put it back up in the air make sure that my filter housing isn't leaking, make sure my drain plug isn't leaking, and then putting the skid plates on is just the reverse of taking them off. Um, just a bunch of bolts back in there. And then I will recheck the oil level again after letting it sit for a few minutes just to make sure we're spot on and good to go. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to the OTRAM channel. Hope you guys are enjoying the uh, basic maintenance series. Um, if you do, give us a like, give us a subscribe, uh, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in.